Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Hashtag Ask Rob Co. Uh, hope you all had a good week. It was such a great show last week. Um, thank you for all of the feedback, all of the comments. Anyone that hasn't seen it, it's on YouTube. You can ask me for the link. Um, our partners at Lunres were great. The data was great. The content was great. Um, all in all, it was a really good good addition and great feedback and really happy with it so i hope it gave you the audience i hope it gave you the content the value add the data the intel that you're looking for and obviously the platform for you to ask the questions you know how it works on the right hand side you put in the questions I'm going to send you a chat now. Questions, questions, questions to everyone. Please ask away. You send the questions, we will give you the answer. Who have we got with us today? James, as usual. We've got Kevin in the room, Dan in the room for further help, support, and questions. And um, really, we're here every week at one o'clock to give you the live update of what's happening in the banking, lending, finance, property market in terms of sales, transactions, data, intel, pricing, product, trends, um, government incentives, stimulus, RICS updates, everything that's happened in the industry, this, that's what we're here for. Really appreciate you turning up every week and asking the questions. Anyone that can't manage to get it every week. We're on YouTube and we will send you the link. Okay, so let's go straight into the sales data because we are seeing some really good positive trends. And I know this is a common theme week after week. So if you go on the right hand side, go into your handout. Handout number five is the 19 week post lockdown sales data. And if you've been listening for the last few weeks, as I'm sure you have been, we've been telling you about this uh, pretty amazing trend actually of record volume of stock coming on stream. What does that mean? That means agents are seeing uh, very high supply levels of new instructions. That's the column on the left-hand side um, this week highlighted as 632 and previously 538, 646 and the 713 of um, nearly a month ago, a record high amount of instructions that week that we'd seen probably in the past four or five years, just to put some content, context of, of what that actual number means. We're at 632 uh, this week, which is the fifth highest of the entire year. So lots and lots of stock coming on stream. Um, our friend from Longrose last week would have said, um, what does that mean? And I've been pushing the last few weeks. It means that with that, we expect to see very high levels of under offers. And finally, once those under offers see their way through, they turn into sales, we get our comparable data, and the market moves to a new level of volume. And I think the key point for this week with the data is the column highlighted in blue, sold column 194. That is the highest level of sold properties in 2020 so far in any given week and that clearly tells us that with all of those instructions with all of those under offers the market is moving and properties are transacting and that is the trend that i expect to see um, over the next four to six to eight weeks as long as the instructions come in and as long as the offers uh, remain, uh, the conclusion of that will be sell, sold properties 
and that is going to carry on in a very positive trend and I think the last week is a pure reflection of that. Um, what does that mean on the ground? It means that we're doing more valuations, we're extremely busy at the moment, I'm going to touch on that and it, it also means that there is a fluidity within the market um, that's giving um, a positive sentiment and a positive trend, especially with all the stimulus that's been brought in, and we just have to keep on reporting it to you so you know what's happening on the ground. Um, I think we can move on to James now and, and touch base on a few of the things I've just mentioned. Yes, hi everyone. Um, so I wanted to start off by having a catch up on uh, how uh, we've been <clears throat> performing for the last four weeks and the types of instructions we've been instructed on and the property advisory which we've provided to our clients. Yeah, I mean, I think we are a, a, a real barometer in terms of where the market is going and what is happening. So when you see the numbers that we're seeing, especially uh, in the the two, three, five, ten million category home counties, uh, London surrounding areas. When you see that the transactional volumes are going up and there's a lot of stock coming on stream, naturally, as uh, market, uh, one of the market leaders in that space, we're just seeing extremely good stock and we're seeing extremely good transactions happening especially in high level single assets so individual residential properties um, i would say with um good good plots good outdoor space um i i find a transaction extremely well both in the home counties market but also within your london markets that i possibly call green areas so your I suppose your Wimbledons, your Parsons, Greens, your Bell Sizes, your Hampsteads, your Highgates, your Marswell Hills, um, your green areas, your village uh, London property, single asset stock, um, detached houses, semi-detached houses with good outdoor space. They are trading well. The market is dictating that your inner London green uh, residential high-end properties trading and uh, I think you've maybe got a couple of deals to share with us on that on that James yeah we've got some uh, sort of deals of the week in terms of catch up which I'll move on to very shortly uh, just as you were mentioning there Rob the real sweet spot of the market seems to be those areas which have a village feel and <clears throat> sort of offerings of green space and uh, ability to get outside sort of air, air quality and access to amenities. Um, we've also seen a lot of activity in the upper tier of the market. Um, <clears throat> how are those sort of coinciding with one another, sort of access to those sort of village areas in the upper tier of the market? Yeah, I think I think there's a perfect uh, tangent and a uh, perfect alignment there in, in, in terms of the stock that's coming on, the transactions that are going through and what we're seeing both with new deals and purchases and refinances that seems to be where the core activity is happening and at a very good level and so i, I i'm i'm a strong believer that the sentiment that's being dictated in the market at the moment on a both refinance and transactional level it is giving up very clear indications to that green London village type um, property and I see that trend continuing. I, I see that savvy uh, investors, whether European, Middle Eastern, overseas or even your home buyer understands now that that's what they want in their medium to long term um, home residence and, and we're seeing very good demand there. Yeah, and in terms of deals of the week, sales of the week we were going to mention, um, 
there's been uh, a large sort of close to 10 million sale in Harley Gardens in SW10, sort of very, very near the, the Boltons, uh, close to two and a half thousand pounds per square foot. Uh, that, that deal was progressing at the end of last week. Uh, we've also got a Chelsea Park Gardens, low built, almost non-basement house, um, <clears throat> which transacted uh, end of last week as well. Uh, just under nine million that one, uh, and over 2,200 pounds per square foot. Uh, that coupled with some of the deals which we were reporting earlier in lockdown uh, really sort of underlines that there is uh, sort of brewing activity in the upper tier of the market. I think, I think what's really interesting with those deals, and you know, I could throw in uh, a, a couple of outstanding assets that we've seen in in Hampstead, Belsize, Highgate um, over the last few weeks is stuff that we've seen that's outstanding and again throw in your Wimbledons and your Parsons Greens um, the value that you get in your park village London prime area compared to your uh, hardcore Chelsea Sloan Square uh, locations is that you're pay paying on, on some occasions, like the deals that you've expressed, two thousand uh, um, pounds per, per square foot plus, and then maybe when you're going to what is perceived uh, to some buyers as a secondary location, actually there's relatively good value in the sense that if you're entering into those what could be classified as slightly secondary prime markets that you're, you're possibly buying in at a thousand to 1500 pounds a square foot depending on where you are where you are and actually um, you know there's reasonable value there if you want green space village parks lakes and outdoor life in terms of eateries and restaurant and cafe culture and I, I, I'm strongly seeing that that's the trend and there's no surprise that the transactions that we're seeing are, are filling into those brackets. What else you got James? Keep the questions coming through, sorry. Column on the right hand side, thank you for the question so far. The right hand side box, type in the question and we will give you a response. Yeah, so I mean following the build, build, build pressures from the central government um, is now a key time to ensure sort of quality homes are being constructed, which are also meeting uh, adequate sustainability levels. Yeah, I, I think that, you know it, it is a golden opportunity, let's just say, um, for home buyers, uh, home builders, sorry, new home builders and developers with the incentives that are out there and the demand that's required and the objectives and the goals of the current government if you wrap that all in um, new build modular building new types of building are, are absolutely required at this moment in time and i think the key is uh, like you mentioned is sustainability and i suppose green building it, it, it is very much on the government agenda and i think if you can do that with speed because speed is really the key uh, in terms of bringing stock to the market that can trade if you have that golden uh, list of ingredients that you can put into place at speed then the, the market absolutely demands that yeah i think that that would be a key component for the housing industry that kind of at the moment pressures of delivering houses uh, making up for lost time of lockdown uh, the possible introduction of modern methods of construction and more modular building um, <clears throat> that could be a trend which we see uh, from house builders in the next sort of few quarters in terms of projects which are uh, st starting to get off the ground um, just a, a quick question for uh, Kevin, who I know is in the room there, and how these modern methods of construction uh, could present any funding issues for lenders, those particularly active in development finance. Yeah, I think that's a really, a really good one. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, 
the the obviously there are issues in modular construction that um, we faced before and part of that is that there's a reticence on banks to provide finance for that on the basis that the, the, the actual construction is not taking place on site and therefore the only way that the banks can get any control over those units while built while being built is vesting certificates which not many of them are prepared to sort of entertain um, they're difficult to um, set up they're expensive and actually as i say the degree of control is that much less so whilst it does provide a, a lot quicker method of construction um, there are issues there and there the banks need to react to this if this is going to be a growing trend to ensure that the deliver that the actual units are delivered yeah i mean i think i think sorry sorry to interrupt james i just think that the challenges historically we faced with with modular buildings and a new build and one of the biggest challenges we're facing at the moment in in the market in the lending market with 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 cladding at the moment um it, it's anything that blocks a mortgage going through or lending to take place because the lender is comfortable with build type a but not comfortable with build type b not because they don't believe it's green sustainable uh or 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 good for the future of um the built environment if they don't have the comfort um to understand uh the nature of that structure and they don't have the certification or the documentation in place um, for that to be approved internally and a sanction the lending team then that's the challenge that we face i mean the amount of transactions and i i can see quite a few of you who have joined today are from uh, the lending side and the sanction side the amount of transactions that we're getting now on a weekly basis for new build properties that don't have the required certification EWS1 um, completion um, certificate for cladding alone to which the deals are not transacting and I know that some of you have reached out and, and, and asked where we're, where we're sitting with that and you've asked what the latest position is the amount of transactions that are either stalling or not progressing or are somewhere in the middle because no one knows who's giving the answer and who's responsible and it's going from person to person to person is is the challenge of 2020 and so um i know i've gone a bit off off subject with the answer i actually see it's being so relevant that the lenders have to get comfortable with what they're lending on and if they can't get comfortable they just won't lend and i think that the pandora's box of new types of of, lend, of, of building and the, the position we've got at the moment with, with the cladding situation what else you got james keep sending the questions through probably going into the last five minutes so anything else you've got please send through thank you yeah, sure. Just to sort of top, top up on that uh, point as well, there's also been reported shortages of skilled workers in the construction industry, notably uh, sort of bricklayers, and that's coupled with sort of rising costs of construction and downward pressure on pricing uh, has put developers in a difficult position. And they've really got to find uh, ways of delivering homes on time, on budgets, and uh, sort of with the skill, skill and workforce available to them. Um, just moving on to another. A question. I know the Metro Bank have today announced that they've been hit very hard by COVID-19 with their sort of pre-tax losses of £240 million. Uh, pounds. <clears throat> with further lending arrears uh, sort of possible uh, this year and sort of likely across the industry, um, how are banks and lending institutions going to protect themselves moving forward? Yeah, any views on that one, Kevin? Um, I think it's very difficult because um, the, once the banks are into into a lend, then they are basically at the, at the uh, discretion of the actual borrower as to when they can come out, and and therefore they can they do not have the 
um, control um, as to that flexibility to move out of the situation, which is perhaps worsening. And obviously with a lot of the commercial loans, this is much more the, uh, of a problem with um, failing tenants and with um, uh, failing tenants and, and also just increased vacancies across the piece. So um, the, the situation is probably, dare I say, likely to get slightly worse before it gets better as people actually sort of get a great deal more confidence prepared to open, especially in sort of obviously the leisure sector and the travel lodges and everybody else trying to negotiate leases down, rents down from CBAs, etc. So I, I don't see that um, necessarily as a short-term panacea here. I think we've just got to sort of, and, and the banks have got to sort of stick with it and, and look for um, a recovery which may or may not be around the corner. Yeah, I mean, we've reported to, to our sort of listeners uh, as sort of the rising LTV products that are being brought to the market by lenders in the last sort of three, four weeks. And that doesn't necessarily go hand in hand with the sort of more um, sort of protection of themselves with maybe lowering the LTV. So a very uh, uh, difficult scenario for them. Uh, however, I think that's mainly in the residential world. I do not um, understand that's at all the case in the, in the commercial world, although obviously the bridging finance uh, suppliers of filling that void to a certain extent, but I think it's more that the mainstream banks are lowering their lowering their LTVs, um, and and the and the bridging finance are filling in the gap up to the the, the more senior lending levels that we've seen in the past. Yeah, I mean, I I, I just see that a follow-on to that, the key marketplaces where we're seeing really positive trends. Um, to keep things on a, in a good direction, that the, the prime, super prime home counties, uh, I suppose migration, village, green, ex outdoor space markets are all performing extremely well, which is great news for the private banks and also the uh, retail lenders across the country. Um, the retail lenders who report to us every week are telling us that they're dealing with record levels of applications. Their volumes are huge. That tells us that across the UK, outside of um, specialisms, generically across the country, um, the demand is extremely high um, and there's a lot of buoyancy within the marketplace at the moment. And that's a really important trend for everyone on this call whether you're listening afterwards on youtube or live and um, the, the the buoyancy is there the volume of applications for mortgages for purchases and for refinances and renewals is at very very strong levels and that's extremely good for us at the same time there are challenging marketplaces um, in terms of but obviously the, the high street and the office market at the same time in in the commercial world you, you you're then going to have the live work opportunities you're going to have the change of use um, permitted development opportunities you've got the hmo market which is performing superbly you know you've got some stand out uh lending markets and i know we mentioned the bridging space but the HMO space is really performing tremendously well and strongly. And so um, it's very important that we give a balanced view of what's not performing in the challenging market conditions, but what absolutely is performing. And we see that very clearly because of the volume of work that we receive within the specialist areas. Um, last questions, uh, if you can get them through now before we close out. What else have you got, James? Well, just, just I think moving on to this sort of lending topic, I mean, COVID has, has clearly changed by its outlook on, a, on acquiring property, certainly with outside space and home working space being a premium. And uh, do lenders need to be more cautious over uh, sort of assets which are possibly less saleable, those flats and houses with limited or no outside space? 
Yeah, I, I think lenders and their strategy, and I'm you know, sorry for all of you credit risk and sanction on the call, but you, you do have your work cut out now because it it's not a, as generic a marketplace as it was six months ago. And what do I mean by that? It means that your lending policy needs to be um, um, built around what the demand is and what markets are, are in a good position and where demand is weakening and pricing possibly is going in the wrong direction. I would say across the board, and six months ago, the markets were relatively good pre-COVID. And if there was a market that was struggling, it, it was definitely uh, the high street. And I think we were all quite aware of that. And that was quite um, obvious. Now we've got other spaces that are, are being challenged, as well as the point that James has just made that um, certain areas are strengthening, especially at outside space and terraces and, and balconies and, and gardens, etc. And so policy and lending and risk has to adapt to where the market is moving, which means that those of you on this call just need to sit down and look at your policy and, and, and re realign your risk in terms of the where the market's going up great and where the market's not moving forward in a positive direction, you need to move your lending policy to allow for that. Yeah, I think All it'd right. be interesting to see uh, how the uh, central London peer-to-tear market uh, performs over the coming months and uh, possibly those sort of uh, one-bedroom units in central London which don't have outside space and sort of how, uh, how saleability is affected. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate everyone joining this week. Thank you for your questions. Uh, as you know, we're here every week, 1 p.m. Hashtag Ask Rob Co. I know loads of you are on, on holiday at the moment. So uh, we'll send out the link uh, for YouTube so you can listen wherever you are, uh, whatever you're doing, so you, you can keep uh, on track what's going on with the latest Intel data, sales, lending, risk positions within the market. Thank you very much for joining everyone every week. Thank you, James. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Dan, for organising everything. Um, we'll see you same time, same place next week. Have a good week and uh, take care and look after yourself. Thanks, everyone.